Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lisbon Wesleyan Church live stream. Um, this morning, I want to start with a few announcements. Uh, first of all, I noticed this morning when I signed on that um, we've got a member of our, our church that's got a birthday today. So um, happy birthday to Judy Porter. Um, if you want to send her some messages, I'm sure she would appreciate that. Um, you know, today is Easter, and um, we're celebrating it in a way that you know, we've probably never celebrated before. We can't really go spend time with our families, you know, that are apart from us. And, um, you know, we're not celebrating in church. We're not doing um, things that maybe we would normally do. Um, but we can still celebrate, you know, the true meaning of Easter and, and what it means to us and, and what it should mean to everyone. Um, I provided in the description today um, a link to some video material from Pastor Tyler for our kids for the, the Children's Church. And um, I'll, I'll show you briefly um, how to access that if you're not aware. Um, so if you go to our Facebook page and um, scroll down, um, you'll see a post um, that was put up this morning. If you click on that, um, it'll take you to Vimeo and then um, just go to the play button and you'll be able to watch that video um, with your kids today. It's a, a great video. Um, next, let's see what else do we've got. Um, so this, this week we try to do something a little, a little more special with, with the music and um, got together with John and Jim last week or two weeks ago and we tried to do this whole live music thing where we'd all be you know, kind of in a block on the screen and uh, it didn't go so well. It looked kind of like uh, one of us was in molasses when we started playing, nothing really synced up. Um, so we decided we'd record our parts, send them around, and then put it together. And uh, so that's what we did for this morning for the music. And um, as with the other Sundays, if during the service you have any requests or anything you'd like to hear, um, just throw in the comment box and um, I'll try to get that worked in. So first of all, the first song we're going to be starting with today is uh, Jesus Messiah. And uh, the lyrics will be on the screen so you guys can sing along just like you would at church.
two songs we're going to do um, were requests from, from last week. Um, so the next song is 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, and uh, that was a request from Cole Jacobs. So here is 10,000 Reasons.
song and um, that song comes in as a request from Garrison Bender and uh, what some of you may not know or may you, many of you may not know is that Garrison is usually the guy that's running the camera at church when we do our live stream and uh, lately actually has also been running the lyrics so a uh, huge thanks to him and um, this next song is We Believe. Father, we 
really is a great song, and it kind of uh, encompasses everything we believe as as Christians and as um, you know us in our faith. Um, just through those words of that song, it's it's just an awesome, um, awesome lyrics and an awesome way to describe um, our faith in God and what He means to us. Um, while that song was uh, was happening, a text came in and um, it came to my attention that yesterday was Garrison's birthday. So uh, happy birthday to Garrison as well, and um, I hope you uh, enjoyed the song. Um, next, we're going to uh, switch over to Pastor Floyd for the Easter message. And I know last week we had a little bit of issue with the stream, and um, during when the stream is happening, we can't stop it to make adjustments. And I believe it's worked out. Uh, I did a test last night. Everything was good. Um, if we happen to run into any issues again this week, um, the service will be posted to our YouTube channel. It's being recorded. It'll be posted to YouTube after this, and um, the issue should be resolved, and the message would be uploaded again like it was last week. But hopefully we don't um, have any issues this week. All right, thanks for joining us for the music, and uh, here is Pastor Floyd. Thank you so much for joining us for Easter Sunday 2020. An Easter like we've never experienced before. We're trusting that more people are hearing the gospel today than maybe any other Easter, as it's going to be all over Facebook, all over live streaming, all of those things. So let's pray that many people will hear the gospel today. Thank you, Andrew and the team, the Jim and John, for their beautiful music this morning. Thank you, Pastor Tyler, for putting some things on for activities for the kids. And now let's think about Easter Sunday. Today we're looking at God's crescendo of Easter, the real story. Matthew 28, 1 to 10 says, Early on Sunday, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out. Suddenly there was a great earthquake because an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. I like that part, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothes was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell away in a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid. You notice every time in scripture where an angel shows up, they say, don't be afraid. It must have been kind of scary to see. He said, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples, that he has been raised from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee, you will see him there. Remember, I have told you, the woman ran, women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened and also filled with great joy. They rushed to find the disciples and give them the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said, and they ran to him. He held he, um, and held his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Have you heard the story about the two young boys, an eight and ten-year-old boy who were always playing pranks, always getting trouble in their little village, and when anything was going wrong, they were seemed to be behind it. When things went wrong in the town, at school, even at the fair, at church, they always seemed to be behind it. And their parents were beside themselves with fear. What if these boys stepped over the line and got in trouble with the law? So they decided to send their boys to talk to their pastor at their church. Now, this pastor was a Bible-thumping, God-fearing, pulpit-pounding rock of ethics and morals. The eight-year-old had the first appointment with Pastor Brown. He hesitantly walked the four blocks to church from his house. He found himself sitting face-to-face -face with Pastor Brown in his intimidating office. Pastor Brown looked at the boy with a deep scowl, and after a full minute of staring at him, asked him, Young man, where is God? The eight-year-old sat silent in his chair. Pastor Brown raised his voice and demanded, Young man, I said, where is God? Dumbfounded, the eyes, lad's eyes widened and he swallowed nervously and remained silent. 
The impatient pastor leaned over the desk and yelled, Young man, I asked you a question. Where is God? At this, the scared-to-death little boy jumped up from his chair, ran home, vaulted the stairs into his bedroom, and hid in his closet. His 10-year-old brother, hearing all the commotion, ran into his brother's room and found him shaking in the closet. What happened, he asked, starting to shake a bit himself. Oh, man, we're in big trouble. God is missing. Everybody thinks we did it. Well, the good news today is that you're missing and you're not responsible. But God did die for our sins in his son, Jesus Christ, and we are responsible for that. Today, we'll learn how to take care of that responsibility. Today, we look at God's crescendo and the resurrection story. And this is the real victory. If you follow the events of Jesus last week on earth, you see kind of three high points or crescendos in the resurrection story. They come from three different points of view of the resurrection. First was man's, mankind's crescendo was on Palm Sunday. When Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, it looked like the height of Jesus' work on earth from a human's point of view. From mankind's perspective, it looked like Jesus was about to be crowned the king of Israel and lead them all in military victory over the Romans. But the cheers of Palm Sunday turned to jeers and to crucify him by Thursday. Mankind's crescendo rings empty and hollow. The second, or Satan's crescendo, takes place on Good Friday when Jesus dies on the cross. Looks like God's plan is in ruins. God's hope for man's redemption is defeated, at least for a moment, in Satan's eyes. They're celebrating in Satan's house. God said he, Jesus said he was God, but now he's dead. Who will ever believe him or anything he ever said? Satan seemingly triumphed, but that is short-lived crescendo of the Easter story because today we see God's crescendo on Resurrection Sunday. It reveals a risen Savior. Let's take a look at God's crescendo by viewing, first of all, number one, the empty tomb. A fair and obvious question that we have to answer is, how do we know the tomb is empty? Well, not by scientific proof. Many people will say, well, you can't prove that Jesus rose from the dead scientifically. Well, no, we don't have his DNA. Uh, we could do that with CSI and all those wonderful things, but we don't have that. But how would you prove you were where you are today? Would you do it scientifically? Chances are the way you would prove that you were somewhere at this moment in time is by evidence that would stand up in a court of law, and that would be through eyewitness testimonies or accounts of you being where you said you were by someone testifying that they saw you there, and, and, and how that is how you would prove it in a court of law. We have many eyewitnesses of the accounts of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hundreds of people saw him alive after the crucifixion. The Apostle Paul sums it up in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 7. I passed on to you what was most important, what was also passed on to me, that Christ died for our sins just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised on the third day from the dead. And the, as the scripture said, he was seen by Peter and then by the 12 apostles. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died by now. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. So let's consider some other proofs of the resurrection. Ten of the remaining disciples, after Judas had committed suicide after betraying Christ, ten of the eleven died for their belief in the resurrection. In other words, they were put to death because they would not deny that Jesus rose from the dead. How many people do you know knowingly would die to perpetuate a lie? What would, it have been, what would have been their point of view to die for a lie? If their leader would have been false in their lie, eyes if he was still dead, 
Why would they die for a dead leader? Where would their courage have come from? They've been hiding in fear of losing their own lives before the story came out that he rose from the dead. They've been distraught and discouraged. They wouldn't have died if it wasn't true. Peter's sermon in Acts on, on, on Pentecost is another proof of the empty tomb. The resurrection of Jesus was the whole focus of his sermon that day. If it hadn't happened, they would have laughed him out of town. But instead, 3,000 accepted Christ as their Savior and were baptized. The fact that the church is alive today is another proof of the empty tomb. Many other religions celebrate their leaders' birthdays and their deaths, but no other religion say their leader died and rose again and celebrate that resurrection. And another proof, the final one we'll talk about today, is the empirical evidence of changed lives through believing in Jesus as Savior is another proof that Jesus rose from the dead. The testimony of millions, yes, billions of people who have accepted Christ as their Savior and have had their lives demonstrably changed show that Jesus was who he said he was and rose from the dead. Secondly, this morning, let's look at what the empty tomb accomplishes for us. What does it gain us, you and me? Well, first of all, it validates Jesus' life on earth. He wasn't a Messiah imposter. Jesus wasn't one of another in a long line of quote-unquote messiahs who surfaced during this time in history. They promised deliverance and freedom, but they all failed, and most of them were killed. He wasn't just another good teacher or leader, as some say he was. Many will say, well, Jesus, boy, I like his teachings. He's a good teacher. He tells us to do good things but I don't buy it that he's the son of God. He wasn't just another good teacher or leader, as some say. He couldn't be a good teacher and claim to be God if he wasn't God. That would make him a liar. Good teachers aren't liars. Or it would make him a lunatic, crazy. And good teachers aren't crazy. The empty tomb or Jesus' resurrection or God's crescendo of Easter proves that Jesus was who he claimed to be, the Son of God. Secondly, the empty tomb validates Jesus' work on earth. Jesus lived for us and died in our place. He took the sin of the whole world on himself. The empty tomb, Jesus' resurrection, means that God accepted his sacrifice for our sins and let him take our God's redemption plan was complete. It is finished, Jesus said on the cross. He bought us out of our slavery of sin. He made it possible for us to be reunited in a relationship with God. A price for sin had to be paid, and his resurrection proves that Jesus' price and paid the price in full once and for all. And finally, his resurrection validates all of Jesus' promises. Jesus kept his promise to come back to life. If you tell me you're going to die, and then in a couple days you're going to come back to life, and you do it, believe everything you say. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to listen to you seriously. Well, Jesus kept that promise that he could do anything he's ever promised. He's credible and trustworthy. We can believe what he says. And finally, consider an application question that comes to us about Jesus' resurrection, God's crescendo of the Easter story. What can be ours today because of that empty tomb. 
First of all, we can all have eternal life in heaven because the tomb is empty, because Jesus rose from the dead, because God's crescendo in the Easter story is real in the most. John 14 verses 1 to 3 and 6 say, do not let your hearts be troubled, do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly, believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith, hold on to it, rely on it, keep going and believe also in me. This is Jesus' words in the amplified version of the New Testament. Verse 2 says, in my father's house are so many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus said, first of all, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. He promised to come and get us so that we can always be with him where he is in heaven. What we gain, can gain, from the empty tomb is the knowledge that we'll live eternally in heaven with God someday. Next, he promised to give us real life here on earth. It's not just pie in the sky and the sweet by and by. He said, I want you to have life to its fullest here in this life, fulfilling the purposes I created you for. John 10.10 10 says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. God wants us to have a full life on earth. Jesus said he was the resurrection and the life. The life is here and now as well as in eternity. If we have hope in the future, we are in the present. Defeated people are ones that have no hope in the future. People who win and are victorious are ones that know there's hope in the future. This pandemic that we're in, we have hope that it will pass. That gives us strength to get through it now. And with God's help, we know that's going to happen. He wants us, he wants our life to be complete in him. God wants our life to be full of love, bringing love where there's hate. There's so much hatred, bitterness and hatred in our world today. If you don't believe me, go on social media and see personal attacks, not only against politicians, but against the people who might have voted for them, either side. There's hatred, there's divisiveness, a divided. Now more than any other time in 2020, we need to share God's love where there's hate. He wants us, our life, to be full of love that spills over on those around us. And God wants our life to be full of peace. Jesus said, my peace I give you. Not like the world gives. You know, peace in the world is only when there's no war going on. Well, there's always a war going on, so there's no peace. But Jesus says, I give you peace in the midst of the war. I give you peace in the foxhole when bullets are flying over your head. I give you peace in this terrible COVID-19 pandemic, when there's so much panic, so much fear arguing, should we wear a mask? Should we stay home? Should we do what the authorities tell us to do? Jesus says to us, his followers, 
Bring peace into that situation. Cooperate. Get along. Speak peace. And love. That's what he has for us in this life. And when we have hope in the future, we have power in the present. What can stop us when our hope in the future is eternal life in heaven? It doesn't get any better than that. And then third, because of the empty tomb, we can have a relationship with God. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Notice Jesus said he is the way. The only way is through Jesus. He said he is the truth. The only truth is found in him. And he said he is the life. There's only one life, and that's in him. In order to know God as Father, we must believe in Jesus and receive him into our lives. John 1.12 says, But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And so as we wrap up this Easter 2020 message, mankind's crescendo was on Palm Sunday and was temporary and didn't last Jesus came to be more than a help to us from time to time. Satan's crescendo was hollow because Jesus didn't stay in the grave. God's crescendo is the real victory over sin and death. Because Jesus died and rose again, we can have eternal life in him if we know him. Do you know him today? As we wrap up and close, do you remember the movie a few years ago called War Horse? Horses are so strong and beautiful animals. Esther and I love to see them, especially as the Amish horses pull the buggies around our area. Just look at them. They seem like they can do anything with their strength and agility. But what makes a horse useful like War Horse was? Yes, it is in the inbreeding, and the, but it took much more than that. War horse had to be broken to be useful and fulfill his purpose as a horse. The horse was broken. War horse, the story of war horse, that horse was broken with love. The love of his owner broke the horse. He wasn't beaten into submission. It was loved into surrender to its master's will. We're like, like horses in that sense. God made us to have strength and character and even beauty in our own way. Until we're God, who, by the way, made us in his image before sin took darkened that. We must surrender to God's loving lordship so he can show us how he wants to use us to fulfill his purposes in life. We were created to do that. But until we surrender to God, it won't happen. Now God, our master, just like War Horse's master, wants to love us and to surrender to him not beat us into submission. God is not the old club looking for a chance to hit us. God is love. In fact, the Bible says God is love. It emanates from him. Have you accepted God's gift, his son, Jesus, into your life so that you can be all he intended you to be? If you haven't, you can do it. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's Jesus knocking on our heart's door. And he said, If you'll open the door, I'll come in. And so, how do you open the door? You just talk to Jesus, talk to God, and say, God, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on the cross and rose again for my sins. And I open the door of my heart 
and I invite you into my life house of which my heart is the center. I ask you to forgive my sins and make me the person you created me to be. I want you to remodel my life house to make it the most useful to you. God, I surrender to your love. Be my master, my Lord, and my Savior. In Jesus' name. If that's the desire of your heart, it's not the words that matter. It's your heart surrendered to God. And if you surrender right now, he'll ask you, he'll come into you and do all that we've talked about in this message of Easter today in you and through you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the beauty of Easter. Thank you that in this time where we're separated physically from each other, there are probably more people hearing the gospel on social media today than any other Easter in history. We don't know that, but that's the assumption we have. And so, God, I pray for every person in this area will hear this replayed, that if they don't know Jesus, they'd open their heart right now and receive him in as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. I hope you have a blessed Easter celebrating with your family and your home. We're a little divided in our home. We're isolated from each other right now for a few more days. But God is good. Esther's getting better. Thank you for your prayers for her. And uh, we, God will see us through this time. And he'll see us through this whole pandemic. And let's obey what the, ruler, what the leaders are telling us. Let's stay isolated for a while longer so that pretty soon we can all be out there together in public again. It'll happen. It'll happen. As And continue to pray. Lift each other up. Keep track of each other. Love each other. Have a blessed Easter 2020 in Jesus' name.